أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ثم بعثنا من بعدهم موسى وهارون إلى فرعون وملئه بآياتنا فاستكبروا وكانوا قوم مجرمين I refer to the point that here the word قوم has not been used why because you know previously the people were at a primitive level of social evolution homogeneous you know a tribe homogeneous no differentiations of the governors and the governed but now as you know there was social evolution you may call it or devolution you may call it what happened whatever you may call it the changes in the social structure now you know society divided into two parts the dominators the dominant sections and people common people common masses who just became ignorant mostly they became like you know beasts of burden they didn't have any any time to ponder over anything and this is what we, we can see you know with our own eyes in societies like you know pakistan and so many other muslim countries big landlords they are the governors they are the small kings of their estates and the common man in the same way the chieftains of balochistan common people absolutely ignorant and if some light comes to them they obstruct it they should get the light because they want to keep them exploited so the oppressors and the oppressed the exploiters and the exploited this differentiation started here in this country you have this oppression in any other form it's the capitalist the capitalist can buy the media the you know the press everything print media electronic media they have you know the money to buy them and then you go, they can be fool the common man common man doesn't have more time to go into details and to know the things for himself if he has any time that is also you know taken up by these amusements that they call them the foolments they should be called you know because they are not allowed them they are not, they don't have any time to think about the real things of the life so this must be kept in mind summa basna min badhi musa wa harun ila firaun wa malai then we sent after them Musa and Harun to Pharaoh and his chiefs be ayatena with our signs now here they mean they do big miracles first of all they behaved arrogantly wa kanu qaum mujrimin and they were a guilty people falamma jaamul haqq min indina we have read these things you know in detail when the truth came to them from us qalu in hadha la sayrun mubin they said it's a clear sorcery it's a magic qala musa ataquluna lil haqq lamma jaakum asihrun hadha musa said to them ask them are you saying this for the truth that has come to you is it is it magic do you really think it is magic wala yuflihu sahirun and the magicians they will never succeed qalu ajaytana li talfitana amma wajadna ala abana now those chiefs and firaun what they said have you come to us 
so as to turn us away from what we found our forefathers practicing. Patakuna lako malkimriya ofilot. And the dominion in the land, they should be for you both. You are aspiring for power. You want to drive us from this land and to govern and control this land through your magic. And we are not going to believe in both of you. فَقَالَ فِرَعَنُ تُونِي بِكُلِّ سَاحِرٍ عَلِيمٍ And said Fir'aun, bring to me every expert magician, whosoever is knowledgeable, sorcerer, call him, gather them. فَلَمَّا جَاءَ السَّحْرَةُ قَالَ لَهُمْ مُوسَىٰ أَلْقُ مَا أَنْتُمْ مُلْقُونَ When the magicians and sorcerers came, Moses said to them, Now you cast what you are to cast. فَلَمَّا أَلْقَوْ And they cast. قَالَ مُوسَىٰ مَا جَيْتُمْ بِهِ السَّحْرِ Musa said, what you have brought and what you have produced is real magic. It's magic. Nothing more. إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَيُبْتِلُهُ very soon Allah will prove it to be false, prove it to be vain. In the la la yuslihu amal al mufsidin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not let the work of mischief mongers prosper. And Allah will prove the truth to be true through His words. Although the guilty people might not like it, they might abhor it. فَمَا آمَنَ بِمُوسَىٰ إِلَّا زُرِّيَتِهِ مِنْ قَوْمِهِ عَلَىٰ خَوْفٍ مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَائِهِمْ This ayah is also one of the most misunderstood ayat of the Qur'an. مَلَائِهِمْ Most of the people have translated as مَلَائِهِ مَلَائِهِ is singular. Chiefs of Fir'aun. مَلَائِهِمْ Their chiefs. So this difference must be kept in mind. فَمَا مَنَا لِمُوسَىٰ إِلَّا زُرِّيَةٌ مِّنْ قَوْمِهِ From his own nation also, nobody believed in Moses except a few youth of his community. And there's an important point to note. As I told you in the beginning of Surah Al-Tawbah, that the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was twofold. Al-Baysat al-Khassah Al-Baysat al-Amma. Khasa for the idolaters or pagan Arabs of the Arabian Peninsula. Amma to the whole of humanity for all times to come till the doomsday. In the same manner, Moses was also sent with double, you know, advent. He was a Rasul, full Rasul, full messenger towards Fir'aun and his chiefs. And also he was a Rasul to his own people. You will find in Surah Saf, وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ أَنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَىٰ لِقَوْمِهِ لِمَا تَوْزُونَنِي وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ أَنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ So there was two communities at that time, the Bani Israel, the children of Islam, which were oppressed, persecuted badly, and you know Fir'aun and his chiefs, they were the oppressors. So Musa, was sent primarily to whom? This must be noted. His primary advent was towards Fir'aun wa Malay. To the Bani Israel it was secondary. And it was like the mission of a Nabi. That is why from them he never, he, he never said, Believe me, obey me, or you will be destroyed. This time, you know, this is the the way the messengers of Allah have been saying to the communities or the nations to whom they were sent. This he said to, to Fir'aun, but not to Bani Israel. Bani Israel, you know, some of them believed in him, some of them helped him, some of them, you know, at many a times, they didn't accept his command, refused. Just we have read in Surah Al-Ma'idah, the whole of the nation refused to go to war. But they were not said that now be ready, you will be exterminated. Was it said to them? No. So there is difference. 
his advent towards the Fir'aun and his chiefs and his advent towards the Bani Israel. فَمَا آمَنَا لِمُوسَىٰ إِلَّا ذُرِّيَّةٌ مِّنْ قَوْمِهِ From his own community, even from his own community, none believed in him except some youth. Now this is the importance of the youth. They must understand. For any revolutionary struggle, youth are the vanguard. They have the courage, the potential. The older people, you know, they have to look to their, you know, maslahat. What is to be done to wife, family and this and that, what will happen. But youth, they are relatively free. Whatever appeals them, they accept it. They are ready to sacrifice. Here also we find this word. Some youth from his nation. Due to fear from Fir'aun and their own chiefs. The chiefs of Bani Israel. This is actually what should be understood and which has been not been understood by most of the Mufassirin as well as the translators. Because they don't have this, you know, structure, this political structure. What happened in India, for example, the Britishers were ruling us, but then among us, from among the Indians, they chose some people. They gave them the titles, Sir and Khan Bahadur. And now these people were more loyal to the Britishers than to their own nations. And the biggest example is of Karun. Karun was from Bani Israel, but he was much near to Fir'aun, and he was against Moses. So actually, the people who are ruled, who are slaves, who are given to slavery, you know, their mentality changes. And people who are more cunning among them, they come near, they become more faithful, they serve the rulers. And they, you know, get the benefits out of them. So they become an oppressor, medium for the nation, for their own nation. They become the agents of imperialism. Although they belong to the oppressed nation, but they become agents of the imperialists, of the governors, to suppress and control the governed people. So this is actually, means Fir'aun wa malayhin, even their own chiefs, because they were faithful. They wanted to go and have a position in the court of Fir'aun. So they, they should get a title from him. Maybe, you know, some jadir from him. Because they feared that Fir'aun and their own chiefs will persecute them. Verily, certainly, Fir'aun was tyrant on land. And definitely he was from the extravagance. وَقَالَ مُوسَىٰ يَا قَوْمِ إِن كُنْتُمْ آمَنْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ فَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُسْلِمِينَ And so said Musa, alayhi salatu wa salam, O my people, if you have belief in Allah. Now note, Rasul is not mentioned here. They were a community who believed in Allah. He is not mentioning himself here. If you have real belief in Allah, so you must have faith in him, in Kuntum Muslimin, if you are real Muslims, if you have really submitted to Allah. فَقَالُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ تَوَكَّلُ And they said, okay, we put our faith and trust in Allah. رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Oh, our Lord, don't make us a vehicle of trial for these evildoers, transgressors, you know. What does it mean? فِتْنَةً لِلْ you have given them the freedom to persecute us. You are trying them, but on us. You know. But we call in Urdu takhtay mashk. Don't make us takhtay mashk for these evil doers. Don't make us, you know, an article for their testing. You are testing their, them on us. So please, wala kajalna fitnatan lil qawmi zalimin. Wala jina bi rahmatika min al qawmi kafiri. Then deliver us. By your mercy, through your mercy, from these disbelieving people.
وحنا الى موسى واخيا تبوا لقوم قما بمصر بيوتا and we send the revelation towards Musa and his brother Harun that you appoint for your nation for your people houses in Egypt وجعلوا بيوتكم قبلة and you make your those houses بيوتكم قبلة they can be interpreted in two ways i will let you know waqimu salata wa bashir al mu'minin and establish salah and give glad tidings to the mu'minin this is just like the baitul arqam in makka you know muslims were not able to go to the courtyard of you know baitullah and pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala openly over there in the beginning so the prophet had chosen and fixed and appointed baitul arqam a house of a companion there they used to gather there you they used to hold meetings there they could pray in congregation also but the same instruction is being given here it was given to hazrat musa because they couldn't pray to allah openly under that tyrant firaun so we told them to appoint certain houses certain dwellings and then these dwellings wajalu buyutakum qiblatan this qibla can have two meanings either places of congregation because this this man is also coming to this place this man is also coming to this place this this person this woman from this side is also so this becomes qibla for them so the place of congregation which everybody is facing and the second meaning is you build all your houses facing towards qibla and this is actually the masterpiece of research done by maulana hamiduddin farahi rahmatullah alai he has written a book ar rayu sahi fi man huwa zabi and in that he had proved that even for bani israil the qibla was baitullah he has proved from quotations from the old testament that whenever they went wherever they went they built they, they you know fixed their tent of worship facing direct in the south and to the south was this baitullah because they they were the progeny of ibrahim alai salatu wassalam ibrahim had, had built this house how could it be possible they did that they didn't know this is the qibla their tent of worship you know qurban ga they used they used to call it because there was more of sacrifice in their sharia than of salah but you know the altar was to be as if you know the whosoever is presenting the sacrifice is facing south and towards the south it is from palestine to egypt if you are facing towards south it is the qibla it is the direction of the baitullah so this has been proved by him hamiduddin farahi you know this book he wrote in arabic arayu sahi fi man huwa zabi but it had been translated by maulana amir hasan islahi one of his disciples and it can be had from pakistan so this was the command given to them wa ahayna ila musa wa akhi an tabawwa li qaumi quma bi misra buyutan waj'alu buyutakum qiblatan wa aqimu as-salata wa bashir al-mu'minin This is just like the battle of Rum of Makkah. Waqala Musa Rabbana innaka ataita Fir'aun wa malahu zinatan wa amwalan fil hayati dunya Rabbana liyudhillu an sabilik. And so said Musa alayhi salatu wassalam O our Lord you have given Fir'aun and his chiefs the adornment and wealth in the life of this world. O our Lord so that they should lead the people astray they have the authority they have the power they have the wealth they have the money they have all the adornments of this life and with these they are leading people astray from your part you have given all this to them ربنا انك اعطيت فرعون وملاه زينه واموال في الحياه الدنيا ربنا لا يضل عن سبيلك what is the outcome of all this they are obstructing people from coming to your path 
they are forcibly turning them away because they have the authority. They have money to buy people. They can buy any agent from our own nation. Now this is also the final stage. And you know the messenger becomes so fed up with the nation to all to the people whom he has been sent that now he is giving, you know, this this prayer for their azab. Rabbanatmis ala amwalehim. Oh, our Lord, wipe away their riches. Washdud ala qobi ala qulubihim. And harden their hearts. Fala yu minu hatta yarabu al azab al alim. So that they don't believe before the time of seeing of the painful torment. What does it mean? Now don't let them believe. If they come to believe now, they will be saved. They have persecuted us. They had done all the crimes. Now if you will let them come to faith, they will be saved. Now you just put seals on their hearts. This is the prayer of the Prophet, of the Messenger. You put the seals on their heart. So that they don't now believe. They don't come to the faith, accepting the faith. Before their eyes see this azab, this torment coming. قَالَ قَدْ أُجِيبَتْ دَعْوَتُكُمَا فَاسْتَقِيمَا وَلَا تَتَّبِعَانِ سَبِيلَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah replied, The prayer of you two has been granted. We have granted the prayer of you, your prayer. قَالَ قَدْ أُجِيبَتْ دَعْوَتُكُمَا فَاسْتَقِيمَا Now you stand firm. وَلَا تَتَّبِعَانِ سَبِيلَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And never follow the path of those who don't know. وَجَعَوَذْنَا بِبَنِي إِسْلَائِلِ الْبَحْرِ And we brought the children of Israel, Israel across the sea. فَأَتْبَعَهُمْ فِرْعَوْنُ وَجُنُودُهُ بَغِيًا وَعَدْوًا Now, Fir'aun and his armies, they chased them, they followed them. Bagyan, rebelliously, wa'adwa in transgression, transgressively. Hatta iza adrakahul gharq, Till when the drowning overtook him, Qala amantu allahu la ilaha illa allahi amalat bihi banu israel. Now we exclaim, Oh, I come to believe in the Lord in whom the children of Israel believe. وَعَنَا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And I am, I surrender, I submit. I am one of the surrenderers. آلان What now? وَقَدْ عَسَيْتَ قَبْلُ وَكُنْتَ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And you disobeyed. You have been disobeying before this. And you have been among the mischief mongers. فَالْيَوْمَ نُنَجِّيكَ بِبَدَلِكَ now today we shall rescue your dead body. Your badan, your body will be rescued and saved. لِتَكُورَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَا So that it becomes a sign for those who are behind you. وَإِنَّ كَسِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا لَغَافِلُونَ But you know, very many people from among humanity are, they don't pay any heed to our signs. And revelations. Well, I can't be one of the Bani Israel of Mubawa Sitkin. Well, I can't be one of the Bani Israel of Mubawa Sitkin. Well, that now we're not talking about when we settle the children of Israel in a secure settlement and we provided them good things, pure. For Makhtalafu Hatta Jabul Ilm. And they didn't disagree. Till that knowledge came to them. Hatta here has been interpreted by most of the Mufassirin as meaning illa min baade ma wa ma khalafu illa min baade ma jahumul ilm. This is how mostly these words come in the Quran. But this is a peculiar exception. The most of the Mufassirin take it that Hatta here means illa min baade ma jah. So what will be the Text. فَمَخْتَلَفُوا 
If they deferred, it was only after that through knowledge and guidance had come to them. But it can have another meeting where we don't need to change the meaning of hatta here. وَمَخْتَلَفُوا They didn't disagree about the advent of the last messenger. They were all agreed upon that the last messenger is to come. But when that true knowledge came to them, then now they are differing. They all agreed. They were waiting. The Christians were waiting. The Jews were waiting. And you know, because they were saying to the Aus and Khadrat, the people the, of, of Medina, that it, the last prophet is, is near to come. And we shall be with him. And when, when we shall fight you, then you will not be able to be victorious over us. So that was the knowledge that these people of Aus and Khadrat gathered from the Bani Israel. And that is why, you know, the six of them, they immediately accepted Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he, you know, he met them in, in, in this Aqaba, the, the valley of Aqaba, in the tenth year, after he returned from Taif. They looked to each other, oh, he seems to be the same person about whom these Jews go on talking. So they were all agreed upon. They didn't disagree about the advent of the last, last messenger of Allah, Hatta Jamulil. Inna Rabbaka yakzi bainahum yawm al-qiyamah. Now their Lord will give the verdict between them on the day of judgment. Fi ma kanu fi yaktalifun in whatever they had been differing. Wallahu alam. Fa in kunta fi shakkin mimma anzalna ilayk. Here also I disagree with some or let me say most of the translators at least. They think here in these ayat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being addressed. While I think that it is the reader or the listener, he is being addressed. If you are in a doubt, Mimma Anzalna Ilaika, about what we have sent down. Now this could I could never ex accept it for Muhammad. He could never be in doubt. So this is actually the people who were listening to these ayat, to these people to whom you know this, this guidance was directed. If you are really in any doubt about what I have sent down, فَسْأَلِ الَّذِينَ يَقْرَوْنَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ So you can ask those people who were reading the book before you. There are the Jews, they live in Medina. You don't know about prophethood. It's something new for you. But you know you can go and, and, and you know, ask them, inquire from them. لَقَدْ جَاءَكَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ This total truth has come to you. فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ So you should never be among the doubters. وَلَا تَكُونَنَا مِنَ الَّذِي قَزَّبُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ You should never be among those who denied and refuted the ayat of Allah, the revelation of Allah. فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Then you will become from among the losers. I don't accept that these words can be directed or addressed to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ حَقَّتْ عَلَيْهِمْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ لَا يُمَنُونَ Verily, those on whom the verdict of your Lord has already fallen, already come. The seal on their heart has already been set by your Lord. Inna ladina haqqat alayhim kalimatu rabbika la yuminun. They are not going to believe. Walau jaatum kullu ayatin. Although all these signs might come to them, never think that if the signs and miracles are shown to them, they will come to believe. Hatta jalabul azab al alim. Only if there is any, you know, chance, when they see the torment with their own eyes, then they will come to believe just as Fir'aun, you know, believed when, you know, drowning had overcome him. فَلَوْلَا كَانَتْ قَرْيَةٌ آمَنَتْ Here, you know, again, the words should be understood. بَعْدَ is رَعَتِ azab. Why was not there any township? Laula kanat qariyatun amanat fanafaha imanuha. So that its iman would have benefited it. Illa koma Yunus. Except the people of Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam. What does it mean? After the 
signs of the torment start. Now the day, now the gates of Toba, repentant, repentant are closed. This is the law. After the signs of death start for an individual, the gates of Toba, gates of repentance are closed. In the same way, when to the nation or the community to whom a messenger was sent, and they rejected, denied, belied, and now when the signs of the torment, of the punishment started, they said, oh, we believe. Now it was not acceptable. Except for one. There is an exception. And that's the people of Jonah. Hazrat Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam. I will give you the answer why. Why this exception? There should be some exception. If the exception is there, there must be some reason for it. But this is the meaning of the ayah. فَلَوْلَا كَانَتْ قَرْيَةٌ آمَنَتْ But here you should think that the words are understood. فَلَوْلَا كَانَتْ قَرْيَةٌ آمَنَتْ بَعْدَ إِزْرَاتِ الْعَذَابِ فَنَفَاهَا إِمَانُهَا This has never been the case that a nation, if he had, if it, it accepted the faith, after seeing the signs of the punishment, فَنَفَاهَا إِمَانُهَا And its iman, its believing, would have benefited him. No. There was never. Illa qawmu Yunus. Except the people of Yunus. Namma amanu. When they believed, they repented. Kashafna anhum azab al khiz. We removed from them the chastisement of degradation and humiliation. Fil hayat al dunya. In the life of this world. Wa matta'nahum ilahi. And we provided them. And we gave them a fresh lease of existence for a fixed period of time. Now, what was the reason? You know, we have read the ayah in the beginning of Surah Al-Araf. And I explained at that time that this trio, Allah sends the message to a nation through the messenger. If the messenger fulfills his duty, the all responsibility goes to the people. If somehow the messenger fails to fulfill the duty, the people get a credit. Just like the modern accounting. For each entry, there must be a corresponding entry. For each credit, a debit, corresponding debit. For each debit, a corresponding de credit. So now there was a discredit to Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam. Why? He left his people without the express permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for this he was punished. He was swallowed by the fish, the big fish. Maybe some whale. Then vomited on the coast. Wahua Sukim. And you know, he begged. He begs the pardon of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minas walimeen. This was the mistake. He committed. So the discredit became a credit for the nation. Because your messenger left you earlier, then we had allowed him to leave. We had, our express permission had not come. You must have read in the seerah, you know, that the Prophet وسلم, he allowed most of the Muslims to go to Medina, to Yasra. But he was withholding himself, not going. He was waiting for the express permission of Allah to leave. And this is always. The executive officers can't leave their place of duty without express permission. They are the executives. They have to control the things here. They can't go. They can't leave. Subordinates can go. But the executives, they can't leave. So the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they cannot leave their nation without the express permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was, you know, a mistake. Or done out of absolutely sincerity, faithfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He became very much outraged. Why these people are not accepting? They are doomed. Okay, I'm going. Mughaziban. Is Zahaba Mughaziban. But this ghazab was against not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'adullah. This ghazab was against the nation. They are known. And I am going. But the express permission had not come. So this is the reason. But on this, you know, I infer. 
we can also hope to have this concession. Why? Because to us today, no infallible and innocent messenger of Allah is preaching. So we can claim a concession from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as you gave a concession to the people of Yunus, alayhi salatu wa salam. But this is my idea. You may agree or disagree. وَلَوْ شَعَ رَبُّكَ لَعَامَنَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كُلُّهُمْ جَمِيعًا And had your Rabb decreed or decided, all would have come to believe. All of them, كُلُّهُمْ جَمِيعًا They are all under our control. According to the saying of the Prophet, the hearts of all human beings are within the two fingers, between the two fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can turn them in whichever direction He wants to. So actually we can do it. But we are, we are testing the people. We are seeing who wants to be guided, who doesn't want to be guided. Who wants to be guided, we shall guide them. Who don't want, well, we, they, they, we shall let them go their way. وَلَوْ شَعَ رَبُّكَ إِلَّا لَآمَنَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَنْكُلْ لَهُمْ جَمِيعًا أَفَأَنْتَ تُقْرِهُمْ لَا سَعْتَ يَكُونُ مُؤْمِنِينَ So will you, O Muhammad, compel people till they become real Muslims, they become Muslims and Muslims? There is no ikraf with deen. And we have in Surah Al-Baqarah, ikraf with deen. At individual basis, full liberty, you are free to believe and you are free to not believe. إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كُفُورًا you can take any way. Had there been no choice, freedom of choice, there couldn't be any question of any reward or any punishment for that matter. So, at individual basis, no compulsion, no coercion. But the system, political, social, economic system, that is a different thing. If the Muslims have power, they must change it. And they must try to gather power. Aiddu lahum astata'atum to be able to change the system and establish the rule of Allah. But then, all the non-Muslims will be allowed. If they want to accept Islam, okay, welcome. We are ready to embrace. But if you don't, you can you can remain as Jews, as Christians, as Hindus, as Buddhists, etc. And it was not possible for any soul to have faith except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I told you there can be nothing. I cannot lift this without the permission of Allah. So how can one believe? But I intended to lift it. The permission came from Allah. I can say I lift it, and I can say Allah made me to lift it. So both these things mean the same. And Allah puts filth, impurities, on those people, abominations of those people who don't use their intellect. Kulindzuru maazafi samawati wal lard. Say to them, now look, what is there in all the heavens and then the earth? Bamaatuhunin ayatu wal nuzul and qomil la yuminun. And all these signs of ours, in nafi khalqis samawati wal lard, waqtilafi lele wal naha, these are all signs, divine signs. Wal nuzul and all the warners. They will not be of any avail to those people who don't want to believe. So what are they waiting for except the, day, the days like the days of the ancient people who were before them? You are waiting for the days like the days of Hud, like the days of Saleh. The nation of Saleh, the nation of Hud, the people of Nuh. فَعَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا مِسْلَ أَيَّامِ الَّذِينَ خَلَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ And these, these, you know, days are termed in Quran in another place. أَيَّامِ اللَّهِ فَزَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ Remind them, referring to the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The day when the whole of the nation of Nuh was drowned. The days when whole of the nation of Ad was finished, done away with. The days when whole of the nation of Samud, so strong a nation, was exterminated. Ayyamullah. Pul fantaziru inni ma'akumin al muntazirin. Say, okay, if you want to wait, go on waiting. I am also waiting with you. I am also among the waiters. 
سما نجی لذینا سما نجی رسولنا و منو کا ذالک اینڈ دین وی شیل سیو اینڈ ڈلیور اور میسنجرس اینڈ دوز ہو کم ٹو بلیو ان دی سیم وے ان دی سیم وے ان وچ وی ڈلیور نو اینڈ ہز کمپینینز ہوت اینڈ ہز کمپینینز سالے اینڈ ہز کمپینینز لوت اینڈ ہز فیملی شعیب اینڈ ہز کمپینینز موزز اینڈ بنی اسرائیل سما ننجی رسولنا و الذین آمنوا کذالک حقا علینا ننجی المومنین This is an obligatory thing upon us, obligatory, that we will deliver and save the people who come to believe. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ فِي شَكِّمْ مِنْ زِينِي Say to them, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, these are the concluding ayat of this surah. If you are in some doubt about my deen, you are compelling me to come back from this deen, to come to your faults again, to come to the the beliefs and dogmas of the forefathers. So you, and it means you are still in doubt about me. That maybe that I accept your, your compulsion or your caution. I give in. Maybe I, you know, turn my back to what I have been saying for the ten years. In kuntum fi shakkim min deeni. If you are, are harboring even the slightest doubts about my deen, فَلَا عَبُدُ الَّذِينَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ I am not going to worship those. Whom you are worshipping instead of Allah. وَلَكِنْ عَبُدُ اللَّهِ الَّذِي فَأْيَكَ وَفَّاكُمْ I will go on worshipping and obeying Allah who will take possession of your souls, who will put you to death. وَأُمِرْتُ وَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And I have been commanded to be among the believers. وَأَنْ أَقِمْ وَجْحَكَ لِلْدِينِ حَنِيفًا And O Prophet, set your face steadfast for the religion, for the deen. As an upright man of pure faith, Hanif, وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And you shouldn't be from among the associators, those who associate others with Allah. Now these ayat can be addressed to the Prophet also and to any listener or reader. They are, they are you know, general. وَاقِمْ وَجْحَكَ لِلْدِّينِ حَنِيفًا يَا أَيُّهَا السَّامِعِ اور وَاقِمْ وَجْحَكَ لِلْدِّينِ حَنِيفًا يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِي These two both, you know, they are absolutely equal. وَلَا تَدُو مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَنْفَعُكَ وَلَا يَنُرُّكَ This again is for the Sameh and the listener and the reader. And don't pray and don't call upon those who cannot benefit you, who cannot do you any harm except Allah. فَإِنْ فَالْتَ فَإِنَّكَ إِذَا لَقِذَمْ مِنَ الظَّالَمِينَ If you do that, you will also be from among the evil doers. وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِدُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ And if Allah afflicts you with some hurt, nobody can remove it except Him. وَإِنْ يُرِدْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَادَّ لِفَضْلِهِ In the same way, if He intends for you something good, pleasant, then nobody can turn back or obstruct his bounty. Yusibu bihi man yasha min ibadihi. He gives and bestows his bounty on whomsoever he likes from among his bondsmen. Wa huwa al-ghafoor rahim And definitely he is al-ghafoor, the forgiving, al-rahim, the merciful. Qul ya ayuhal nas qad jaakum al-haqq min rabbikum. Say, O mankind, the total truth has come to you from your Lord. For manihtada, fa innama yahtabir nafsi. So whosoever takes to the right path, he does so in his own interest, to his own benefit. For mandolla, fa innama yadillu alayha. And who goes astray? Well, he is doing it against his own self. He is putting his own self into loss and into doom. وَمَا أَنَا عَلَيْكُمْ بِوَكِيلٍ I am not a ward or I am not a guardian over you. I am not responsible about you. وَتَبَعْ مَا يُحَا إِلَيْكُ The last words to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And follow whatever is being revealed to you. بَسْمِرْ And persevere. Have patience. حَتَّى يَحْكُمَ اللَّهِ Until Allah gives his command, 
his decision, his all judgment, wahua khairul hakimin, and definitely he is the best of the judges. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.